in this video I will be discussing a plethora of topics regarding pop vocals and vocal technique. I've mentioned some of the things I'm gonna say here in my previous videos but this essay is gonna be more thorough and detailed. Buckle up guys and let's get into it. At first I'd like to ask you a question. Is there a difference between a singer and a vocalist? Those two terms are often used interchangeably, however there seems to be a difference. A singer is someone who works in the music industry, performs their songs and presents their work for an audience through mastered studio recordings or performing live. A vocalist is someone who uses their voice in a more technical way, having an arsenal of more or less advanced skills and abilities. It is a more specialized and narrow term. Since these terms, singer and a vocalist, are not completely interchangeable, the question arises, is it possible to be a good singer and not a very good vocalist, and vice versa. I think so, it seems like it. An example of a good singer, but not a particularly strong vocalist, could be Billie Eilish or Halsey. Actually, Taylor Swift is, I think, a prime example, or a tune. Now that I think about it, Adele could be a pretty good example as well. Leah Michelle may be a great vocalist, but is she a great singer? <laughs> That's debatable. Is it possible to be both? Sure, look at Mariah Carey, a great singer, and a great vocalist on top of it. The term singer revolves more around artistry and emotions. The term vocalist is a more about skill and technique. While singing as a form of art may have little to no rules, vocal technique and vocal pedagogy do. And where there are rules, there is room for objectivity and comparison. Vocal ability, just like any other skill, is competitive. Just like I cook better than my lovely girlfriends, who's probably gonna watch this at some point, so hey, I love you. Toby Kelly has a stronger, more developed lower register than Demi Lovato. Stone cold, stone cold. You see me standing while I'm staring at my phone. Stone cold, stone cold. <laughs> stone cold, stone cold, you're dancing with her. Over in the same sense that Kelly Clarkson is a better belter than Christina Aguilera. Aviana Grande has a more polished vocal agility than Camila Cabello. I could go on and on, but you get the point. In contrary to a somewhat popular belief, it absolutely makes sense to compare singers vocals-wise. There's nothing wrong or unnecessary about making such comparisons. And that is also why we need to stop calling singers amazing, incredible or stunning left and right. If everyone is great, then no one is. Yeah, thanks, I agree. Vocalists are not only divided into bad vocalists or good vocalists. Since singing itself is a complex and nuanced act, there's more variety. Vocalists can be weak, average, adequate, competent, good great, amazing. If Beyonce is an amazing vocalist, then it means that Nomani cannot hold the same title. If Wendy is a great vocalist, then Rosé cannot be called the same. If Lady Gaga is a great vocalist, then Dua Lipa simply is not. However, even though singing has theory and science to it, it still isn't always black or white, and sometimes it's still hard to judge. I can understand the occasional frustration when it comes to the criteria which people tend to base their judgments on. For instance, belting seems to be some sort of a deal breaker in discussing vocal capabilities of a vocalist. Why? 
I tried to answer. Well, belting is not only often impressive and appealing, but it's also hard. To sing like this... takes not only talent and a good voice, but most importantly, practice, time and effort. Singing naturally isn't only about belting. For example, if we take Chloe Bailey and Perry Edwards, Perry may be a more proficient and technically stronger belter. But I'd still call Chloe a more balanced, well-rounded vocalist. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. For me, and I'm feeling good. which ultimately makes her a better vocalist. You know, I've been doing these videos for a while now, and one of my biggest pet peeves about the comments that I sometimes get is, well, you judge, but can you sing better? Ha, now I wanna hear you sing. My favorite one that I remember so vividly. Well, you know, I've heard you sing before, and you're not even that talented, so I don't get why you are commenting on someone else's vocals. This mindset is not only silly, but kind of dangerous and harmful at the same time because it shuts down criticism. Imagine if you went to a restaurant, ordered food, had some critical feedback and the waiter was like, well, sure, the pasta is undercooked, but can you cook better? No? Then enjoy your fucking meal and don't forget to smile. <laughs> oh. That's actually me laughing at my own jokes because I think I'm funny, okay? That's just not how criticism and commentary work. A note that I'd like to end this video on is that although analysis and commentary is fun, I encourage you to enjoy music in whatever way you want. You have freedom to like what you like, outside of any technicalities and theory. And it's not mine or anyone's in that matter to tell you what you should like and what not. And that is all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I really felt like making a more essay styled video this time. Definitely please let me know if you liked the video. Do you want more of these? Because I could keep them coming. That's all I'm gonna say. I personally love commentary and essay videos. Making videos like these is very fulfilling to me. And I quite enjoy them. Not gonna lie. Once again, thank you guys for watching and see you in my next one. For now, bye guys.